Okay, here's here's some malpractice. We're going to talk about this for a second. Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks against Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee. Okay, we have had a variety of good things to say about Hobbs, about Starks, to a lesser extent, Keith Lee. I'm waiting for Swerve to grow on me. But Starks and Hobbs are looking great. Keith Lee is nearing Vader size. He's getting bigger and, and slower, and it seems like... Did you hear Jim Ross knock him because he was so busy milking the crowd for his chant that he the match was starting and he hadn't even taken his jacket off yet? And JR's like, well, if I was... Swerve, I believe I'd be concerned that my partner hasn't even taken his ring jacket off yet. He wouldn't pay any attention. So anyway, Hobbs and Keith Lee faced off one time earlier, and Keith Lee just palmed Hobbs' head and shit-canned him through the ropes. Remember that? They'd done something to Starks. Hobbs comes in. Keith Lee turns around, and there's Hobbs and Keith Lee face-to-face. -face, and Lee just palms his head, shit-cans him to the floor, then grabs Starks and awkwardly shit-cans him and throws him from the wrong side anyway. He's turning him around the wrong side, and then tags Swerve, and the heels had to stand there on the floor for 15 full seconds by a 1,001-1,002 count, while in slow motion, Swerve got up on the top rope and then jumped off and pushed off and backflipped off Keith Lee's chest onto the waiting heels who stood there watching the whole goddamn thing. And you keep saying heels. It was Starks' hometown. He got a monster pop. They were baby well, well, faces. Yeah, well, yeah, oh, and that's another thing. Yes, the, the heels were the the uh, popular team with all the people and the baby faces. So here you've got two brand new baby faces that just came in a company. So the thing to do is put them against a heel in the heels hometown so that they will make sure to cheer for the heel. <laughs> That's what they did with the, that was the problem with the Patriot in Nova Scotia. You idiots. He's brand new. He can't. He doesn't have enough in the bank with the people yet for them to see an arena full of people booing him on national television. So anyway, after that spot, um, somebody please, if you talk to Will Hobbs, tell him don't ever let people shit in his fucking face like that. I don't care if it's Keith Lee or anybody else. Just reach out and palm his head and fling him from the ring like a fucking piece of shit. I got hot. Then they go to the break. Then coming back, all the heels heat was in the break. Starks and Hobbs, I mean. When they came back, there were horrible simultaneous cold tags to Lee and Starks where the partners were just laying in their respective corners, reaching up and tagging their... And then Keith Lee sold more for Ricky Starks than he did for Hobbs through the whole thing. It was a sloppy match that made little sense. They treated Hobbs like a flunky. That's what I wrote. And then Swerve tosses Starks into the ring after he's done some kind of move. Did you catch this one? So imagine this. Hobbs is on the apron in his corner. Keith Lee's on the apron in his corner. Swerve throws Ricky Starks in the ring. Swerve gets up on the apron in the heel corner with Hobbs. Two feet from him on the other side of the buckle and everybody froze. Hobbs is looking like, why are you right here next to me? <laughs> and fucking Swerve is looking like, why are you here? This is where I have to be to do my move. And the announcers are saying, well, is Swerve trying to lull or con Starks into coming? They didn't know. And then finally... Hobbs goes to grab at him. Swerve then, after, after Hobbs goes to grab at him finally, Swerve jumps down, grabs Hobbs' feet, jerks him to the floor, and then gets back up and vaults over the top rope into a spear by Ricky Starks. So the only place that this idiot could figure out how to do his fancy spot 
was right it next to Will Hobbs, so Hobbs got shit on again and wiped out to get him out of the way so that this moron couldn't figure out how to do this from any other corner of the ring, or just don't fucking do it. Apparently, Swerve is a complete idiot. So then Starks hit a big false finish and got a two count, and the people popped like crazy because it's home to his hometown. Lee and Swerve did some more shit to, to Starks. Taz came out, and they got in a four-way. Hobbs got posted, got run into the post, and down again. They went into some finish. I can't describe what they were doing. It was all over the place. And finally, Keith Lee goes to hit the ropes in front of Taz, and Taz trips him, and he stumbles into Hobbs' spine buster. One, two, three. And I I didn't have time to go back and watch the whole thing again, nor the inclination. But maybe somebody can and answer me, was that the first actual bump that anybody in this match took for Powerhouse Hobbs was the finish that was assisted by Hobbs' manager? And why did they act like they were confused why Taz was there? He's their manager. Oh, well, that's another thing. Yes, they were cool. Why is Taz come down here? It's Team Taz. I didn't understand that either. But uh, you know what my takeaway from this match was? You remember how Butch Reed, before he died, said that he saw a lot of himself, young self, in Powerhouse Hobbs, and he was a big fan of Powerhouse yeah, Hobbs? that's right, yeah. Okay, I've worked with Butch Reed many times. I've I've... Been in the locker room with him in the UNO Lakefront Arena. Same building. If there had been a match with Butch Reed in it instead of Powerhouse Hobbs and Powerhouse and Butch Reed had been treated in that match like Powerhouse Hobbs was treated by these people, when they got back to the locker room, there would have been a fucking fight that they would have had to call the SWAT team about. He would have told every month. Well, he wouldn't have gone for any of it to begin with. But it, let's just say it had of, and he had of, and it happened that way. Every motherfucker on that other team, and probably everybody in the babyface locker room, they'd they'd be looking like the security after Wardlow got finished with them. That was the most disrespect. And I don't even know whether these guys are smart enough to know what they did. But they laid Will Hobbs out in the ring in the middle of New Orleans and said, open your mouth and we're going to piss in it. That's exactly what they did. And Watts would have fined everybody in the match except Hobbs for burying Hobbs, and then he would find Hobbs twice as much for allowing himself to get buried without fighting back and doing something about it. So there you go. I can't add too much to that other than from the moment they came out there, Hobbs and Starks are stars, and they're great, and they're good in the ring, getting better, at least in Hobbs' case every day. Not that Starks isn't, but he's been wrestling, I think, a little while longer. Yeah. I just wish they were used better. But these two guys, especially Hobbs, every time you see him, he looks like he's in a little bit better shape, not drastically better. His work gets better. The little bit of promos we've seen have been good. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with Keith Lee. I almost thought it was a double turn. It was like, okay. <laughs> I th in my eyes, Swerve is the heel. Just accidentally. Yeah, Swerve and Keith Lee are the heels in this match. They're working like heels. But I don't know. I like Hobbs and Starks a lot. Hey, uh, again, I'll tell you what. Um, it, Hobbs is the same as, as a lot of these guys. He, Hobbs needs a Heyman. Can you imagine what Heyman could do with Hobbs? You're not talking about, for anyone listening, you're not just saying, like, as a mouthpiece, like a Taz. You're saying, in terms of working as a, with them behind as the scenes. As a coach, as someone to take care of him, as someone to not let people take advantage of him in these matches because he's green and he doesn't know and maybe he's too nice a guy. And either these other guys are so stupid that they don't know how to work with a guy like that to make sure that he doesn't look like a piece of shit, or they just don't care. That's a, that he needs somebody looking out for him. Maybe they ought to give him his own producer and make him a, because he's certainly deserving of being a project for a future superstardom. They're just going to dick around and not teach him how to take care of himself. And he's not going to get over and other people are going to get over at his expense. This was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. 
I'm not saying, and somebody's going to say, but he pinned the guy. Fucking hell. That's the problem is that's how deep some of these modern wrestlers and bookers and or promoters think about the fucking business. He looked like shit and was pie-faced, put down, head-palmed, shit-canned, and otherwise made to look like the fourth wheel in this thing through the entire match. And it wasn't even a situation where, oh, we can get some on him because he's getting the pin in the end. No. No, you you have to make him look like a physical threat. When Keith Lee and Powerhouse Hobbs faced off and Keith Lee just reached out and grabbed him by one hand and threw him out of the ring, it was over. You just pull the goddamn curtain back and you see that the Wizard of Oz is a little old man from Kansas. So when you said at the top that there was malpractice, that's the malpractice. Yes, that's it. I I got hot for Hobbs because I think he really could do something, but there's no place to teach these guys anymore. Re- Hobbs, read Mike Mondo's Twitter account. You'll learn more than working with these fucking assholes that are burying you. You know what we hadn't seen on this show so far, Brian? What's that? A fight backstage amongst the girls. <laughs> now with cake. So they, Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero have a cake for Thunder Rosa. And of course, everybody thinks that it's going to go in Thunder Rosa's face. And Thunder Rosa says, do you think I'm an idiot? And she puts her hand under the cake and puts it in Nyla's face. And then Nyla's blinded by the fucking cake. So she swings at a Thunder Rosa, but hits Vicky instead. Thank God she didn't really hit her. And you could tell she didn't really hit her. Elsewise, it probably killed Vicky. And then Thunder Rosa and Nyla have a girls' fight backstage with furniture now with cake. 